guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry Channel. For this video, we'll discuss the topic 2.3 Electronic Configuration. This is the part 3 video of this subtopic. And in this video, we'll discuss about the electronic configuration for the atom and its monoatomic ion. So we basically is going to talk about how the ion is formed by using electronic configuration. Okay? So we know that in the neutral atom, the number of proton is actually the same as the number of electron. So that the positive charge and the negative charge from the proton and electron can be cancelled off. And how can cation be formed? Cation is formed is when the electron is removed from the neutral atom. When the electron removed from the neutral atom from the outermost shell, or the shell that is furthest away from the nucleus. Why we must remove the electron further from the nucleus first? Because that will experience least amount of force of attraction. When the electron is the one that further from the nucleus, where you have your proton in the nucleus, the electron that is sitting far from the nucleus will be the one that having least amount of force of attraction. Therefore, when we remove electron, it's always easier to remove the electron that is furthest from the nucleus. Okay? Next, when it's an N ion, how can an N ion form from the neutral atom? Simple. An ion is always formed when the electron is added into the neutral atom. We know that the N ion is a negative charge ion. So to form a negative charge ion, electron must be always added, okay? And the electron will be added into the orbital that has the last electron filled in and just continue from where you stop at the neutral atom. To form the anion, you will basically just continue adding in electron, okay? So the formation of anion is pretty simple. You just basically continue adding in electron into the orbital accordingly, okay? Next, we are going to look at the formation of cation in the S block. Okay, so in the S block means the last electron is still in the S orbital. Okay, so cation over here means positive charge ion. Positive charge ion means we are going to remove electron. In the other words, we are going to remove electron in the S block to form the cation. So I have a few examples over here. So the first example that we have over here is potassium. Potassium having 19 proton, so a neutral potassium with no charge, you will have 19 electron. Okay? And by looking at this electronic configuration or SPDF notation of potassium, your valence electron is 4s1. This is your valence electron, okay? And the cation that potassium can form is K positive. K positive means we need to remove one electron to form the K positive. So which electron we are going to remove? We will always remove from the valence electron, okay? So to form the K plus, we will remove the 4s1 electron. Therefore, the electronic configuration of K plus will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and stop at 3p6 because the 4s1 electron has been removed to form a K positive charge. Simple. Another example that we have over here is magnesium. The proton number for magnesium is 12. So we are going to have 12 electron when the magnesium is neutral, okay? And by looking at this SPDF notation, we know that magnesium having two valence electron. The valence electron is located at 3s2. That is the valence electron of magnesium, okay? What ion do you think magnesium will form? Two positive. Two positive means we need to remove two electron, okay, to form a magnesium two plus ion. A two positive cation need to remove two electron from the valence electron. 
So when you remove the two electron already, the SPDF notation of Mg2 plus will be 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6 because the two electron from the 3s2 as the valence electron has been removed to form a two positive cation. Simple formation of cation in the S block. So the element will be an S block element when the last electron you fill in is into the S orbital. And the valence electron over here will be the one in the S orbital. If the S orbital having S1, then you have one valence electron. If the S orbital having S2, then you will have two valence electron. Simple, easy. Next, let's look at N ion formation of N ion, which is your negative charge ion that will be formed when you add in electron. Okay? We are going to look at the formation of N ion in the P block. So how do we know that it's a P block? Simple. When the last electron that you fill in, okay, is in the P orbital. So when the last electron that you fill in is located in the P orbital, then your element is in the P block. Simple. The first example that I have on the screen is pretty simple, fluorine. So you have fluorine and the proton number is 9. Therefore, you have 9 electron when fluorine is neutral. So we need to identify the valence electron. The valence electron for the P block element is simple. is your Ns plus your Np. So the valence electron for fluorine over here is your 2s2 and 2p5. Both of these will be the valence electron. Okay, so how many valence electron you have? You have seven valence electron, 2s2, 2p5. So you have seven valence electron. Okay, so when you have seven valence electron, then you will be easily add in one more electron. Why you add in one more electron when you have seven valence electron? Remember your octet? All right, you want to achieve the stability of octet. So the octet is actually eight electron. So from the seven valence electron, we will add in one electron into the last orbital that you fill in electron. So the last orbital that you fill in electron is 2p5. So we continue adding one more electron in the 2p5 to become 2p6. And right now, you will then achieve the octet. Can you see that? Your octet is your 2s2, 2p6. Simple. So what is the charge of the ion will be very much depends on what is your valence electron. How many valence electron you have. Therefore, it's very important to identify the valence electron that you have in your element. For the p-block element, the valence electron is the total electron in the ns and np. Okay, another example that I have on the screen, sulfur. Sulfur have 16 proton, therefore you will have 16 electron over here. And the valence electron is your Ns and P. The last Ns and NP is this. Therefore, your valence electron over here is how many electron? 3s2, 3p4. So you will have 6 valence electron. And from this six valence electron, guys, what do you think the charge of sulfur will be to achieve octet? To achieve octet, six valence electron need to plus two more electron. And when you add in two more electron, what do you think the charge of sulfur will be? Sulfur will then be a two minus because from the six valence electron, we want to achieve the octet of eight electron you need another two electron. So we add in the two electron, therefore, sulfur will become two minus. Where the electron going in? Simple. Into the last orbital that you fill in the electron just now. So 3s2 remain, but 3p4 will become 3p6 to add in another two electron to achieve the stability of octet over here. That is your valence electron changing from 6 
to become A. Okay, formation of N ion in the P block. Another example, I have arsenic. Arsenic having 23 protons. Therefore, you have all the way of 23 electrons. Look at the last electron that you fill in is in the p orbital. Therefore, it's a p block. And the p block valence electron will be your ns plus np. So, the valence electron is your 4s2 and 4p3. Look at the number of electrons that you have total in that. The total electron that you have is 5. Therefore, you have 5 valence electrons. And from the 5 valence electron, same story. You want to achieve octet, guys. Octet is 8 electron. How many electron you need to add? Simple, 3. And when you add in 3 electron, guys, what do you think the charge of arsenic will be? Arsenic will then be 3 minus because you add in 3 electron. So where the 3 electron will go in? The electron will definitely going into the last orbital that you have just now. So every electron and orbital at the front will remain unchanged. 4s2 remain unchanged. 4p3 will have 3 extra electron. Therefore, it will become 4p6. And that will become your new valence electron, which will be achieving octet. And that is the reason why your arsenic become 3 minus to achieve octet okay simple next we are looking at the cation in the d block cation is your positive charge ion so to become a positive charge ion we always need to remove electron in the d block so how do we know that the element is in the d block simple when the last electron is filled into the d orbital so when the last electron is filled into the d orbital, then we know that your element is in the d block. Okay? And how do we identify valence electron in the d block? Slightly different. Your valence electron in the d block will be your 3d plus your 4s. That will be the valence electron in your d block. Okay? And the first example that we are going to look at is your iron. Fe having 26 proton, therefore you will have 26 electron. And look at the last electron. The last electron is filled into a d orbital. So when the last electron is filled into the d orbital, guys, the valence electron is your 4s and 3d. Okay? But look at the arrangement of our SPDF notation. It's not according to the energy level, but it's according to the energy of the orbital. You should know that your 4s is having a lower energy than your 3d, okay? So, before I start answering the question, let's rewrite your theorem according to the energy level. So, we are going to rearrange that thing, that SPDF notation, where after 3p6, we just rearrange, simply rearrange, the electron is remain the same. No changes on the electron but just rearrange the energy level, okay? And how can a Fe positive be formed? Fe positive can be formed because we decided to remove one electron. So which electron are we going to remove from the valence electron? We know that the valence electron of our ion today is your 4s2 and your 3d6. That is your valence electron. But I only want to remove one electron. So which electron are we going to remove? Simple. You must always, all right, remove from the 4s before 3d. You must always remove from the 4s before 3d because 4s is sitting further away from the nucleus. When it's sitting far from the nucleus, the force of attraction is weaker. When the force of attraction is weaker, it's easier for us to remove electron. Therefore, when you remove electron, you must always remove from the 4s first. Okay? Therefore, the electronic configuration of your Fe positive will be 
1s2, 2s2, 2p6, all the front electron, your core electron won't change. All right, your inner electron remain the same. The only changes that will happen is towards your valence electron. So you will have 3d6 remain unchanged. We only want to remove one electron. So 4s2 become 4s1. By remove one electron, your Fe becomes one positive. So how do we become two positive? Simple, we remove another electron, okay? We need to remove another electron to become positive two. So from the positive one to become positive two, we remove one more electron, okay? Or we can look straight away to the neutral atom over here where you need to remove two electrons from the 4s. So in the other words, the two electrons in the 4s will be gone to form a Fe2 positive. Therefore, the electronic configuration of Fe2 positive, the inner electron will remain unchanged, but you will remain with 3d6. The 4s will be gone because you remove two electrons from the neutral, or you remove one electron from the positive one. Okay? Last but not least, Fe3+. plus. How can I form Fe3+. plus? Either I remove three electrons from the neutral. Okay, you remove three electrons from the neutral over here. Or you remove one more electron from the two positive. Both will give you the same answer. Okay? So, your Fe3 plus electronic configuration will have the electron changes in the 3D. The core electron remain the same, but your 3D will become 3D5 only. Because from the 6, you remove one electron to achieve a Fe3 positive. Okay? So, there is two important things over here. Valence electron. How do we determine the valence electron? The valence electron is the one that's sitting in your 3D and 4S, both of them. Okay. Second, when you want to remove electron from the D block element, you must always remove the one in the 4S before the 3D because the 4S is sitting further away from the nucleus. And therefore, the electron in the 4S will experience a weaker force of attraction. Always, always remember that. Okay. So another example for the cation in the D block. So we have talked about the D block valence electron. We have talked about the cation and everything. So we'll go through this example pretty quickly. Before I do anything, let's just rearrange your SPDF notation according to the energy level. So we we'll just put all the n equals to 2 together, n equals to 3 together, and n equals to 4 at the last. So that you can see who is sitting further from the nucleus. So the first ion that I want to form is a V positive 1. So from the neutral, the V positive 1 will be removing 1 electron. And we will always remove from the 4 S because it's further from the nucleus. So the core electron will remain the same. Everything will remain the same at the core electron. Changes will only happen to the valence electron. That is your valence electron. Okay. So 3D3 still remain the same. Only 4S to become 4S1 because you remove one electron to become vanadium 1 positive. Okay. And next we have vanadium 2 positive. So going from the neutral to the vanadium 2 positive, I need to remove two electron from the neutral vanadium to become two positive. So remove two electron means the changes again happen to your valence electron. Everything at the core electron will remain the same. All the inner electrons shall remain the same. No changes until 3p6. The changes will then happen at the valence electron. And right now, I want to remove two electron only. 4s2 will be gone. So you stop at 3d3 because the two electron in the 4s has been removed. Okay. Next, we have vanadium 3 plus. Vanadium 3 plus means from the neutral, guys, 
we need to remove how many electrons? From the neutral, we need to remove three electrons. Okay, from the neutral. So the three electron is from your 4s2 and also one from the 3d3. So we know that the inner electron again remain the same. So everything in the inner electron until 3p6 will have no changes. After remove the three electron, you will then remain left with your 3d2. That is how your vanadium 3 plus is being formed. Okay. Next, if I have vanadium 4 plus, same story. From the valence electron in the neutral atom, we will then remove four electrons from the neutral. And the same story because the inner electron will never change. The inner or the core electron will be that. And you remove four electrons. So it will be two from the 4s and two from the 3d. Therefore, after remove two from the 3d, you will then have 3d, one left. Simple. And last but not least, when you have vanadium 5 plus, so vanadium 5 plus from the neutral, you will be actually remove all the five valence electron. Okay. Looking at it, you know that your valence electron over here is your 3d3 and 4s2. When adding 5 positive means you are going to remove all the 5 electrons. That will then give rise to your vanadium 5 plus 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6 only. Because all the valence electron has been removed. Alright, makes sense? So that is how we form cation in the D block. Be very careful with who is your valence electron and where do we remove the electron from? Okay. Next, let's do some example. Example one over here. Question asking for SPDF notation of calcium 20. So calcium is neutral with no charge. Therefore, the SPDF notation is your 20 electron. And also it's most stable ion. So we need to look for the ion. So first and foremost, let's write the SPDF notation of your calcium 20. So calcium 20 electron, therefore your SPDF notation will start off with 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. Always remember, after 3p, you must fill the electron into 4s first, according to Afbau principle, okay? And then next, we need to identify the stable ion. How to identify the stable ion? We need to know the valence electron. The last electron that you fill into your calcium is your s orbital. So when you fill last electron into the s orbital, you know that your valence electron is actually your 4s2. Okay, because this will then be your s block element. Knowing that your S block element, the valence electron will be the one in the S orbital only. Okay? So the valence electron will be the one in your S orbital. I have two valence electron. When you have two valence electron and you want to achieve octet, alright, the stable ion is of course to achieve octet. Two electron is easier to accept six electron to achieve octet or it's easier to remove the two electron and achieve octet. Of course, it's easier to remove the two compared to accept another six. And therefore, when you remove two valence electron over here, because it's easier to remove the two valence electron, the most stable ion that you will have is your calcium two positive. You remove the two electron already, so the charge will be two positive. And once you remove the two valence electron, your SPDF notation will change accordingly. And looking at the new SPDF notation of your calcium 2 plus, that obey the octet rule. And therefore, the most stable ion for this question will be calcium 2 plus. Simple, easy. Another example over here, example 2, same question, SPDF notation of your X unknown 35 and also the most stable ion. 
So before anything, let's write the SPDF notation of your X35. It will be 1S2. After 3P6, make sure you fill the electron into 4S2 first. And that only made up to 20. Therefore, your 3D will be 10. And then you will have 4P5. And then we rearrange the SPDF notation according to the energy level. Okay, rearrange that into your energy level. And you can see your last electron is filled into your p orbital. When the last electron is filled into the p orbital, we know that it's a p block. When it's a p block, valence electron will be the one in the ns and also np. So in the other words, your valence electron right now is your 4s2 and 4p5. That is the valence electron. And 4s2 and 4p5. So how many valence electron? We have 7 valence electron. And guys, 7 valence electron to achieve octet. Okay? Where you know octet is 8 electron. So how do you achieve the octet from the 7 valence electron to 8 valence electron? Simple. Add in 1 electron. Right? Then you achieve octet. So from the X, to achieve of that, you need to add in one electron. So what do you think the charge or the most stable ion, the X will be? The X will definitely be negative one or one negative. As the charge is one negative, because you'll be adding in one electron. And where the electron will go in? The last orbital just now. The electron will go into your 4P. So everything shall remain the same because the core electron shall never change. When everything remains the same, the changes will only happen to your 4s2 and 4p5 become 4p6. And that is your new valence electron that now achieve octet. And what is the most stable ion? The most stable ion will be your x one minus. All right, simple. Next, let's look at example three. Example three is slightly different from the previous two because the one that given, the electronic configuration that is given is for the N ion. So we have the electronic configuration of N ion given over here. Suggest the SPDF notation of Y. So the question is actually now looking for the SPDF notation for the neutral Y. So we are moving backward, okay? We are moving from the N ion to the Y. So how do we solve this type of question? Simple. Don't think it that way. Think it from the normal way where you have your Y neutral. If from the Y neutral, I want to form a Y3 minus, we know that we need to add in three electron okay we know that we need to add in electron and we say that we are adding in electron we know that we always add into the last orbital of the last electron that we fill in into the neutral atom okay so from the y neutral atom we are going to add in three electron to become y3 minus so find the last three electron in your y3 minus the last electron that go in, we know that is in your 4s and also 3d. We know that between the 3d and the 4s, we will fill the 4s first, okay, before the 3d. So we know that. So you must fully fill the 4s before the 3d. But we are looking for the last three electron because we are adding in three electron. So 3d having two electron right now, that is the last two electron but we are looking for the three electron so 4s will have one electron that we fill in after that so taking out this three electron that we added in into your y to become y3 minus therefore your y electronic configuration should be 1s2 2s2 2p6 all your core electron will remain unchanged but your 3D will have no electron yet 
and your 4S shall only have one electron. Okay, so you can check again. If I am moving normal from the Y to the Y3 minus, as we agree, we are going to add in three electrons. Look at the changes. From your 4S1, we add in three electrons. The three electrons will be added in to your 4S to become 4S2, the one electron. And then after the 4S, we will fill the 3D. So after the 4S, we have the presence of 3D, 2 over here, the last two electrons that we put in. Okay, so that is the way that we are going to find the SPDF notation of your neutral atom Y if the N ion SPDF notation is given. All right, so you need to find the last electron that you put in into the SPDF notation, okay? Just be very careful with this. When you involve your 4S and when you involve your 3D, okay? When we add electron, you must always add the 4S and then the 3D. If you want to remove electron, okay, to form your cat ion, you must always remove from the 4S, then only you remove from the 3D. This makes the N ion and cat ion different. Okay, so an ion to add electron, you must add into the 4S and then 3D. The cat ion to remove electron, you must remove also from the 4S, then only from the 3D. Okay, simple, easy. Next, and also the last example for this video. Similar as the previous example, where the electronic configuration given is your cat ion. Just now is an N ion, right now is a cat ion. You have a positive charge ion over here given. All right, but the question asking for the neutral Z. So the question is actually asking for the electronic configuration of your Z from the electronic configuration of your Z positive. All right, and how do we do that? All right, don't think it backward, just think it the way forward. So from the Z to become Z positive, from the neutral to become cation, I know we need to remove electron. How many electron? It's a positive one. So we remove one electron, okay? And after you remove that one electron to become a Z positive, the SPDF notation left on the valence electron is your 3D5 and 4S1. That is already after you remove one electron, okay? So what happened to before you remove electron? Before you remove the electron, the core electron, the inner electron will never change. Until 3P6, it will be that, it won't change, okay? But what happened to the valence electron? So, before I remove electron, I shall have one more extra electron in here, in your Z-neutral, right? And we know that to remove electron, we know that the rules to remove electron is you must remove from the far away orbital from the nucleus, which is you must remove from the 4S first. So to remove the one electron, you must remove from the 4S orbital first. In the other words, the one electron that you have removed will definitely come from the 4S, will definitely affecting the 4S. Therefore, before you remove, the 3D5 also won't change. The 3D5 will remain because the electron that you will remove is actually from the 4S. Okay? Therefore, look at the changes. 4S1 is after you become cation. Before you become cation, the neutral over here is a 4s2. And we know that from 4s2 become 4s1 is because we remove one electron from the neutral to become the positive. And to remove the electron, we must always remove from the outermost shell, which is your 4s orbital before your 3d. So to remove just one electron, we will definitely remove from the 4S2 to become 4S1. Therefore, your Z will be from Z to become Z positive 1.
Okay, simple. So this entire video is talking about how you determine the ion from the atom by using the electronic configuration. So make sure you are very comfortable in writing the electronic configuration and also be able to identify the valence electron by using the electronic configuration. Okay, so if you have any question or any example that I can help with, make sure you drop it in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.